Hello everyone, Zane here and welcome to my channel. Hope you're having a great day so far. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to level up your all jobs from level 1 to 50. Now, I just got my paladin up to level 50, so now I want to work on my secondary jobs. I'm going to be doing this as a marauder, which is also a tank. So my paladin slash gladiator gear will be shared to my marauder. Alright, so I don't have to worry about gearing up this job as I get higher up in levels. This also goes for the healers and the range and the casters. They all share the same gear, respectively, and melees have three different sets. Maiming for dragoons slash lancers, scouting for ninjas slash rogues, and striking for pugilist slash monk. Alright, so keep that in mind. Now, for a level one, I would recommend three pieces of gear that will give you big experience boosts. If you do not have these, do not worry. You can still do this leveling guide. It's just going to take a little bit longer. For the helm, you have the Helm of Light or the Friendship Circlet that will give you 20% experience points boost up to level 10. After 11, it's useless. The earrings, which are Menfina's earrings. These are the new ones from Pre-Ordering and Walker. If you have the Almegan from Stormblood or the Aetherite from Shadowbringers, use those. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. This will give you a 30% boost of experience up to level 80. Now for the ring, this is the brand new ring which gives you a 30% experience point boost up to level 30. After that it just becomes an accessory with good stats. This has gotten through the hall of the novice. You have to do all the exercises to get this ring. You just have to do it on one character and that's it. You still want to do the Hall of the Novice on all of your old jobs because it's a good experience and you get a brand new gear set, which is basically called brand new. So I do have that already done for my tanks. All right, if you have your race level one gear, use it. I don't, I got rid of it. So I'm basically just wearing nothing at all. Alright, so to start your all job, simply go to the guild master, accept the first quest, and get your weathered weapon, which I have right here. Equip it, change into your class, go up to the page icon, gear set list, and make yourself a gear set for your new job, and then you can set it to your hotbar for easy access. Alright, once you join your new guild, the first thing you'll see is the hunting log. This is specifically to classes only. Each class will have its own hunting log from levels 1, and then goes next up to level 10, then 20, 30, and then the last one would be a level 40, once you have completed the previous page. Alright, these are going to be your ways of leveling up for the very first couple of levels. And then you get a nice bonus for completing it all together. So while you're doing your class quests, which you need to do every five levels for extra gear and skills, also for the experience. I won't be doing all the class quests in the video, so just remember to do them every five levels. All right, so the very first class quest you always will get for every job or class is slay nine enemies in the open world. Since we need to go to the open world to do our hunting log and this quest, that's what we're going to do. All right, so when we go out into the open world, we will continue. All right, guys, here we are in the open world. Don't worry about your gear. These enemies are pretty weak at level one. But the first thing you want to do, of course, is any enemy who has this icon over their head, obviously is for the class quest. Now watch the experience from this. Alright, so we got 230% experience boost because all these accessories and then the gear I'm wearing. Now, the other thing we're getting is armor bonus. Basically what this means when you have a main job at a higher level, all of your jobs that are below the level of your main one gets a experience boost. Also at the bottom at the experience bar, as you can see, we have a yellowish 
bar and then we have the blue bar. The blue bar is your rested experience. When you go into a inn to log out or if you're in a main city or any settlement with a big giant aether like this, you will get a sanctuary icon next to your experience bar. That's called rested exp. Always make sure you log out in these areas because that will add up and that is how you gain a lot of experience. Unfortunately, it will get drained really, really quickly, but it's a way to level up as well. So killing two enemies, coming to level two. All right, so we're going to complete this and then we'll move on to the hunting log. All right, so I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, guys, so I'm back. I just finished killing the wildlife for my class quest. I'm already level three. So the next thing we're going to do is a little bit of the hunt log. As you can see, there's little things above their heads. That is the hunt mark. And you can tell by going to your hunt log that we need to kill three tiny mandragoras. Now, when you kill an enemy in succession of relative level, you will get what's called chain bonus. Think of it as the chain bonus from Final Fantasy XII. So I killed two in succession, and now I got a chain bonus, and now we have an 80 second time limit before it wears off. The more you get in a chain, the more bonus experience you also get. A little side note, if you're attacking an enemy whose level is higher than your own, there's a chance that you will miss. Alright, so we finished our hunt log with the tiny mandragoras, and we got 980 points of experience. So we're going to kill one more to get that chain bonus, and I hit level 5. Alright. So now we're level 5, we now can 1. Finish the class quest that we're on, and 2. Gain the next one. So because we are level 5, I can now equip a piece of gear. The only thing I have right now is the hands, so we're going to equip that. Once we get to level 8 and 10, then we can have our first set, hopefully our first set of gear already ready to go. Alright, so you basically want to do your class quest every 5 levels, and do the hunting log for your first couple of levels and you will get there to level 10 relatively quick all right the next thing you want to do is unlock your challenge log this is something you should have done already on your main character you unlock this after completing the quest call of the sea i believe right before you do your sustasha dungeon the ones that you're ultimately are going to be working on is the fates do 15 fates to get yourself a good chunk of experience. This will scale as you level up. When you unlock your very first three dungeons, which you should have had that done already, you can start doing dungeon roulette. Do three, complete five dungeons all together, complete three guild hests, complete 10 guild hests, and then give five player accommodations. All this here is free experience. You get this, every single Tuesday because this is for a weekly reset only so once you do this you can never do this again until the next following week at I think it's like 3 or 4 a.m. on Tuesdays I don't remember exactly the right time that it resets but every Tuesday this will reset regardless if you completed it or not so you can be doing this for probably to level 15 all right because you can't do dungeon until you get to level 15 anyway so all right guys so i'm going to go do my class quests i'm going to continue doing my hunting log and i will see you guys when i hit level 15. all right guys so i'm now level 15 and there's two things i forgot to mention one food buff any food that you can eat will give you a three percent experience points bonus all right so make sure you have that up at all times eat two for an hour the other thing is going to be free company buffs. The heat of battle. 
if you are in a free company or if you're the owner or if the leader has these up all the time you will get an extra 10 percent bonus to any enemy you defeat that's going to be heat of battle too if you have level three available those are probably better to use but level two is what you want if you have those available okay you get those at the grand company that your free company is affiliated with all right if you do not have the helm of light or the earrings you're probably going to end up having to do a couple extra fates or do a couple love quests to compensate for the experience points you're not getting all right so as you can see here this is the gear that i had from my paladin slash gladiator so i didn't have to worry about buying gear now from 10 to 15 all i did was the hunting log at level 10 all this here got me to level 15. of course killing the enemies the chain bonus the buffs to the food and the free company and of course the gear i'm wearing made it all possible i also started doing the challenge log i did three guild tests and that was pretty much about it and i did about four fates all right so that's all i did basically to get myself from 10 to 15 as well as doing the class quests you might have to do a couple of fates and love quests if you don't have the gear like i told you but that's pretty much about it level 10 to 15 is really really easy all right so at level 15 you have access to your first dungeon sastasha obviously with all the buffs up and everything you can probably gain a level simply by doing the very first dungeon after that level 16 you can unlock tamter decroft and hopefully by the time you're done with that you can do copper bell mines the challenge log has you doing three through the duty roulette once you unlock more than one dungeon the complete five dungeons will come naturally and then doing five combinations will also come natural so make sure you knock these out when you have the dungeon unlocked and start doing your fates all right you should hit level 20 by doing two to three of these dungeons with all the buffs up and make sure you do your class quest at level 15 i'm going to get 13,440 experience points through with that and of course some gear that i unfortunately don't need because at level 15 you got the brand new gear make sure you do the novice haul to get this on every roll all right so this gear here will carry you for a little while plus the ring all right and of course when you do this, the, the first three dungeons you'll get the plundered stuff as well so this is the gear set that i'm wearing for my tank so i'm going into sastasha with this all right so from level 15 to 20 we are going to be doing those three dungeons as we go along all right so make sure you grab your class quest and i will see you guys at the end of the sestasha dungeon to see how many experience points and how many levels i gained simply by doing the first dungeon with all the buffs up all right so i'll see you guys in a bit Alright guys, from what you just saw, I just ran Sastasha, and look at me now, I'm level 18. I gained three levels because of all the different experience buffs I had. I had food, I had the free company buff up, I had my earrings, and I had the ring. And I gained three levels. Every mob was like giving me 2,000 experience points, and then the bosses were giving me like 20 to 30,000. And that was pretty amazing. Alright, but our ultimate goal is to get to level 20, because that opens up more avenues of leveling up. So around level 17, you unlock the other two dungeons, Tantara and Copper Bell Mines. Ultimately, you would go into Copper Bell Mines if you want, if you didn't have anything else. And that will definitely get you to probably level 20. When you unlock those two, you unlock the leveling roulette. We did have uh, Tank in Need, 
Unfortunately, it changed to healer in need. And if you are playing in the in need adventurer, you get a bonus to your experience and your guild. That's why it's important to make sure that you do it if it is a bonus or in need. Down here, you also have guild has roulette. Every time you do a new guild test that you haven't done whatever job you're playing on, you get a completion bonus. See, as you can see here, I'll get a 5,810 buff just for doing it the first time as a Marauder. This goes for all the other jobs. If you play this on Gladiator, Pugilist, uh, Conjurer, you'll get a completion bonus because you've done it for the very first time. All right, so my options are either Go back into Sub Sasha, Tam Terror, or Copper Bell, or go into the leveling roulette, which will most likely give me to level 20. Because at level 20, we will be able to add in the squadron system, which is through your grand company, which is a probably a better way to leveling up, but things can get very, very tedious if you keep doing the same thing over and over again. I know for me, I don't want to do dungeons over and over and over again. When you have the hunt, you have the challenge log, you have roulettes, you have beast tribes, you have your squadrons. You have so many, we have fates, you have so many ways that you guys can level up besides doing dungeon runs. Alright, so I'm going to give you guys a little bit of variety. Alright, so I'm going to go and do my leveling roulette. And most likely I probably will hit level 20 or 21. And then we'll pick up the next class quest and get that done as well. Alright, so I will see you guys when I am done getting to at least level 20. Alright guys, so I am back. I just finished the living roulette and I ended up getting Tam Terra Deepcroft. Now I went in and was level 18 and I come out level 22. So I gained four levels through all the experience buffs and everything. And that wasn't even tank in need. If I had tank in need, I'd probably be level 23. Alright, so after you do your roulette, and you make sure you do that every single day by the way, in case you don't plan on playing 1 to 50 in one day. Make sure you do those every single day. Uh, for the gear, I'm wearing the Halatali Doctor set from that dungeon. I already had all this stuff already from my Paladin slash Gladiator. And we also can equip the Dawn Wrist Guards from the main story. Everything else is still the same. Make sure you do your level 15 class quest because you end up getting your Tomahawk or Shield Lob if you're a tank. The next one is going to be at level 20, so make sure you also do your level 20 class quest. Now, now that we're 20, we can now do the squadron system. Now, I'm not going to explain the squadron system in full because then this video would be too long. If you want to know about the squadron system, I have a video about that. The quality might not be as good as it is now, so be forewarned. Alright, so basically the squadron system is like the trust system we have in Shadowbringers. Except, I don't think they're going to be doing any more with the squadron system. Alright, so in order to unlock the squadron system, you have to be second lieutenant in your grand company and have the challenge log unlocked because they go hand in hand. Talk to your supply mission NPC at the front desk and he'll have the quest to unlock your squadron. You have three by default and you need to get a fourth one by doing a challenge log. By chance, you'll have a recruit every single time you do a challenge and you come to the papers to recruit your fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth person. You only can have up to eight people. Then you need to get them to level 20. You do that by doing the board for the training courses and then send them out on missions. The squadron missions is where you set them out. At level 20, you'll get the mission flag mission to do to unlock this and also the command missions at level 40 you get another mission you have to complete to do the priority mission and then if you do 15 of the command missions or 15 different dungeons you know you've done it by the check mark you'll be able to do another flag mission to get your captain rank for your grand company all right so here you have one tank one healer two dps you will be taking one of the roles and your squadron will be taking the rest if you're doing this as a tank, get yourself an Arcanist. Why? Because they can help heal. The AI for healers is stupid in this. I died four times because the healer wasn't doing his job. And now it's on a three-pack pack mob pull, by the way. So you have Halatelli all the way down to Pharaoh Sirius Hard. This is in Heaven's Ward. 
Stay away from these ones because they don't give you experience. Stick to these ones. All right. But at first, you want to spam Holotali until your uh, squadron members can get higher levels to do these. All right. One thing I will explain is the. Orders. Now we have independent, offensive, defensive, and balanced. When they do those missions, you might end up getting a mastery of one you already have unlocked, or they'll unlock the other ones. So independent has HP plus, damage plus, and damage reduction by 8%. This is mastery two. Uh, offensive damage is dealt by 12% increase. Defensive does HP and damage reduced, and balance does HP and damage dealt. For DPS, you want offensive. For tanks, you want a defensive because of the defensive uh, reduction. And healers, either independent or you can do your tanks as independent as well, or balanced. All right. So at least have at least one Arcanist on your group if you're going as a tank. Two might be even better, but at least one. So you're gonna have to do a couple missions to get them out. All right, so get them all to level 20 by doing the training courses. Do these at least three times a day to get 9,000 experience points and send them on their missions. Those missions are 18 hours to do the next one, so once a day. So talk to your sergeant. He also has the manual if you want to read everything yourself and do your command missions. All right, so spam Holotali to get your squadrons to level up. My honest opinion, Holotali, Brayflox, Stone Vigil are probably your best ones. You can do Dismal Darkhold because you have the crystal at the beginning of the dungeon that basically reduces your damage, but it's only if you're doing it as a tank. You can just basically just skip this and stick with Stone Vigil. All right. I highly recommend doing this as a DPS. As a tank, you can just queue into the dungeon itself or do the roulette. At level 20, you also have the other hunting log at level 20, so you can do these all as well because that's just free experience. So then you can lock the next one at level 30. All right, so your two choices, either continuously spam the duty roulette, spam your highest dungeon, in my case, it is Holotali. All right. But at this point, just do your squadrons if you're a DPS. But if you're a tank, just spam the highest dungeon. All right. So I'm going to do this until I hit at least level 25, and then we will continue on with the video. All right. So I'll see you guys when I hit the level 25. All right, guys. So I'm now level 25. I just did my class quest, finished my hunting log for level 20. So now the next one will be at, at 30. And I did a couple of fates for the challenge log and of course guild hests and I got myself to 25. So I wanted to add in Palace of the Dead at this point because Palace of the Dead can give you a crap ton of experience. So for those of you who know what Palace of the Dead is, good. For those of you who do not, it's basically a dungeon crawler type dungeon type content that you need to kill a bunch of enemies on each floor to spawn the exit. You also have a resurrection stone if you are with a party member or people who don't have a raise. You use that stone to resurrect anybody who has died if you don't have Phoenix Downs or Healer or Red Mage, Arcanist, Summoner, etc. All right. Every 10 floors, you will fight a boss. After you defeat the boss, you can either continue on or leave and get your reward. You get a crap ton of experience, gill, and you also would get tombstones if you're at endgame. All right, so you can add this into your repertoire of, of experience if you don't want to do dungeons, fates, the challenge log, etc. This is a great way to do it as well. All right, so I'm gonna quickly run one to 10, and I'll show you guys exactly how much experience that you can get out of Palace of the Dead. Of course, the experience will depend on what level you're at. All right, so when we get to the final boss and complete it, we will continue.
All right, guys. So I just finished floors one through ten. As you saw, I defeated the boss. As you exit, you will get your reward. Now, I gained half a level through this. It took me about ten, maybe fifteen minutes. I don't remember. I wasn't really counting the time, but this can be an alternative to running dungeons. All right, this is a change of pace. If you like to do it, do it. You need levels one through fifty done or floors 1 through 50 done in order to access Heaven on High, which is the deep dungeon of Stormblood. So you might as well do this while you're at it. All right. It unlocks a lot around level 17, I believe, and Gridania's Adventures Guild. The house that dead built, I believe, is the quest. It'll be a little lava fell on a crate that unlocks the quest for you. And as you come into Quarry Mill, around X25.2, Y20.7, talk to the captain after all that is done and join the palace of the dead you can go in as a matched party to the duty finder or pre-made or you can do solo if you like if you want to spam a certain floor like one through ten or 50 to uh, 60 just reset your progress right here and continue spamming it like that there is an achievement if you do it all by yourself floors one through 200. all right so by adding in this, you have another way of leveling up your alt jobs. All right. So basically those are all the ways you guys can level up your alt from level one to 50. All right, so my paladin is 50. My marauder will be 25. So I'll continue doing this. I'll continue doing dungeon runs. I'll continue doing my squadrons, doing the challenge log, doing my hunt log. And before you know it, you should be 50. Alright guys, so that's pretty much going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like if you found this useful. Any comments, questions, and or concerns, please put them in the comment section down below. I'll be more than happy to help you guys out with any questions you might have. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you are new for more Final Fantasy XIV content and join the first brood. As a reminder, hit that notification bell next to my subscribe button. This way you guys never miss an upload. And follow me on my Discord channel if you like by going to the about section of my YouTube channel. The link will be down below or use the world icon on my YouTube banner. So until next time guys, may forever walk in the glorious light of Laura Bahama. Take care guys and happy leveling.